Good morning, everybody. Welcome, my dear friends and fellow alumnus. As the world changed so rapidly towards the end of March, it was a loud wake-up call for all of us. When there is a crisis, you go to work and you get it done. We need to come together more than ever to rebuild and come out of this better than we were. Today, we will have insight on the impact of this pandemic on the operations of the organizations. Survival and success depends very much on adaptability in a new world of many unknowns. Saturday is not a day we would wish to participate in such a serious and formal event. But when we approached Simon George, President Cargill, he readily accepted to be our speaker for today. Simon George is our distinguished alumnus from the 1988 batch chemical engineering, and he also holds a, a master's degree in business administration from LIBA. Simon George took charge as the president of Cargill's Indian operations in 2018. Simon has over three decades plus of experience in managing various business in the food and, in the food and beverage industry and has handled numerous senior level positions across the region. He has worked on developing business strategy, new markets, mergers and acquisitions, providing turnkey solutions and establishing business types. On behalf of ABN and the alumni community, I extend a very warm welcome to Simon. It's gratifying to note that the agenda of today's webinar covers a very wide range of future relevant topics and Simon George will share his experience in specific area of his expertise. It's heartwarming to see a very happy bunch of participants on a Saturday morning. Welcome to you all for responding to our call and being here. I'm sure all of us will have many takeaways from this webinar. Thank you. Over to you, Simon. Thank you, Gopi. Uh, I hope I'm audible, Gopi. Yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, okay. Yes, sir, audible. Yeah, thank you. Um, first of all, my uh, sincere thanks to uh, uh, the ABN network uh, to, uh, to uh, call me for this uh, uh, talk. And it gives me a, a tremendous feeling in, in sense that, you know, I never been talking to an alumni group of uh, of this number and this knowledge with background background of knowledge. So my sincere thanks to both Gopi and, and uh, uh, Tariq for inviting me. And uh, just to introduce a little bit is that you know I, I after which. Uh, I went through different processes of different organizations. I've worked for a couple of uh, a, a few organizations, and I've landed up in a company called Cargill. Cargill is basically a, a large uh, food and agri company in the world, with a uh, which is one of the world's largest uh, private limited company. It's it's a size of 110 billion dollars, uh, and I was uh, uh, good, I mean, lucky enough to be the president of uh, Cargill India because. India, as you see, for every multinational company which comes to India, uh, it's it's very strategic for India. And we right now we do about a turnover of about 2.3 billion US dollars in India. Uh, and somewhere uh, in the scheme of things of what uh, cargo looks from an India perspective is uh, it's too small because when it considers itself against a, com uh, a country like China, uh, where we do about a 15 billion turnover, uh, and we are about a 2.3 billion. Uh, gives us that uh, our scale of things have to dramatically change in a country like India. So, uh, uh, so India is becoming important, uh, uh, let me tell you. And uh, very frankly, as we talk, uh, I might uh, go ahead and say that how uh, um, uh, every multinational is looking uh, India as an option. And very frankly, are we ready? Uh, considering the COVID situation, uh, it has given an unprecedented opportunity for India. Uh, to really, when the whole world is looking at alternative uh, of manufacturing and sourcing um, and, and to uh, have a clear supply chain, uh, whether India as such, uh, uh, I would say, is in the crossroads of having uh, one of the, uh, uh, the best opportunity that in, in its history has come in before it. But are we capturing? Are we not capturing? Is, is, is something that we will 
uh, uh, understand as we move forward in my small presentation. Now, whatever I'm going to talk is uh, very frankly, everyone knows what is COVID and how does it affect, but uh, uh, I'm trying to talk from my perspective. Therefore, uh, uh, what I feel, and, and therefore it's just a sharing of my perspective, while uh, most of these things, uh, I don't have to really talk because you, uh, most of it, every one of you will know. So what uh, I, uh, I thought is, first of all, just to let you know from, uh, um, I'm trying to move the slide one minute. Yeah. So what I'm trying to do is to tell you uh, from, you know, a, a COVID situation where uh, uh, it has, uh, what does it affect us? It affects uh, from, uh, is it, uh, uh, it affects the different, uh, uh, what you call as the phases of our life. Uh, it's just not economics, but um, COVID has now come to become uh, a, a huge uh, crisis from different facets of life. And how are we dealing with it and what, uh, uh, we look from uh, um, uh, in, in terms of resolving these issues. Um, and, and, and that's where the, uh, at the end of the day, which, which, which is also, let's understand one thing. Um, these were the years when we were talking, when the, the big, uh, uh, the gurus talked about saying that the world was actually heading towards the, the best prosperity time of ever of mankind. For a simple reason, uh, uh, the human being or the mankind in this world uh, was going through a phase of, you know, where um, uh, the, the death uh, rate has been one of the lowest ever. The poverty level was one of the lowest ever. Education was the highest ever. The women literacy was highest ever. Uh, in the world, I'm talking. I'm, it could, there could be some countries little bad, some countries very good. But in overall, as a human, uh, a human being in this world, uh, it was believed to be that, you know, we were actually going through some best phases of our life in the history of human being. But, you know, uh, and that is when this COVID comes in. And, you know, it, it, it actually hits about to say that, uh, are we really ready for uh, uh, any eventuality? However, you know, mankind has seen uh, 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 different kinds of these adversities and and they are uh, one over it. So um, um, point of view is, but we are uh, unfortunately the generation that, that is to face it now. Uh, from, a, uh, uh, from a health perspective, if, uh, if I look at, uh, uh, um, uh, it is like, you know, we said the mankind was not ready for this. Uh, uh, while we, there have been uh, WhatsApp messages and X, Y, Z that we've talked about that there could be a likelihood of some virus that can affect. While it was, it was in fact to an extent uh, um, uh, early warned through SARS and uh, um, uh, the few of those things, this which we attack that we had. But however, we as human being was not ready. I don't think so. I think any one of us sitting in this group ever thought that there's something called a COVID that's going to come up and affect our life. Now, the knowledge uh, on the COVID uh, virus is still, it's on the learning process. Therefore, therefore, therefore there is a lot of uh, uh, what I would say is uh, unsure of things that could happen uh, uh, from a COVID perspective. We're still in the process of identifying vaccine and uh, efficacy, uh, the difficult things that uh, yet to be proved. And therefore, uh, uh, if you look at it, it is actually uh, specifically now, if I talk from an India perspective, uh, uh, we lived in a, another kind of a world for some time thinking that uh, the summer will reduce COVID uh, or the immunity in India can withstand these things. There, there are different stories that we keep talking but you know, the virus never found those stories true. Uh, and, and what you're seeing is we are seeing a trajectory in India, which is actually uh, very, very concerning. Uh, uh, so we are in a crossroad of a, of a time uh, uh, when uh, this, uh, the peak of, uh, um, uh, of COVID in India uh, could be as, uh, as far as November, December. Uh, and, and, I, um, and I don't see that COVID is off our head for at least the next 12 months. So from what you see here is that uh, um, uh, the trajectory, as I said, is really alarming. And uh, uh, it could be that uh, different places can pick at different places. And more important that we always used to talk about the migrant labors that went across to the rural area. Now, 
these things are going to actually increase the rate of saying not now, but it will be somewhere around September, October. And, and in, what is worrying is that the, the health sector, uh, uh, is it ready? And specifically in the rural areas, um, it, it could, um, can, can be a real cause of worry for us. I would uh, uh, only try to say is that, you know, uh, 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 we are really on the early days of the battle. Uh, we might be tired of what we are hearing, but uh, uh, frankly, uh, this is, we are at the very early stages in India and we are here for a long, long drawn battle. Uh, so let's be ready for this. Fundamentally, uh, what I'm trying to say is from our perspective, what we look from a, a cargo perspective as a company perspective is India is among all the countries in the world, believe me, among all the countries in the world, we are worried about India. Uh, um, uh, so it's a long drawn battle. Um, uh, we hope uh, uh, some miracle could happen in between, but uh, it is a cause of worry. And the, what I want you to carry back is that uh, let's be ready for a long drawn battle. Uh, therefore, prepare ourselves much better, whether it is going to be our own personal health, our family health, or is it our business health, uh, our economy, uh, everything uh, is going to uh, take a toll on us. So uh, uh, let's really be ready for the bigger battle. So let's come to uh, uh, the larger perspective of, I'm just, because we are not the experts of health per se, but I would say uh, uh, economic crisis. Um, I, I'm sure um, uh, when there is sickness and death uh, uh, in any country or any piece of world is saying, there is a direct impact on its economic activity. And therefore, uh, uh, let's be ready that uh, uh, this is going to affect us as a country uh, 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 to a great extent. Now, when I say uh, uh, it is going to be, uh, uh, the crisis is going to, is expected to deepen, uh, I, I, I'm sure you would have heard about what IMF has uh, just said about a couple of days back that the global uh, uh, GDP is going to drop by minus 4.9% and India is going to be about minus 4.5%. Now, uh, when you say minus 4.5%, I think if we, if we do a little bit of deeper analysis of this minus 4.5%, uh, you know, the recovery uh, uh, will vary from country to country. Uh, and in a country like India, from state to state, uh, industry to industry, sector by sector. So it's going to be a, a, a difficult times, I would say. For, let, let me just tell that, you know, a country like India, we are democratic. And therefore, the political uh, uh, influence uh, in the decisions that we make uh, is very, very critical. Uh, um, so uh, one is to be very popular. One is to be uh, seeing what is right for the country to do. One is to see what is the larger uh, plan of what you want to be in this world. Having said that, uh, 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 I, I, I'm talking from a contraction perspective of the economy. It is not going to be uniform. Now, let me uh, just take about the sector that I deal with is uh, agriculture and food. Now, uh, if I look at the uh, Indian agriculture um, part, you know, it, it forms about the 18% of the, of the Indian economy. Uh, uh, but more important is uh, it gives 50% of the Indian em employment. So you could imagine the impact on agriculture. Uh, and that is why you always see uh, 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 why politicians take their stand in, pro in favor of the, uh, the farmers in agriculture uh, because it's a big vote bank. Uh, having said that, uh, um, uh, it is a 3%. Uh, um, uh, when we ended up our last year, <coughs> uh, you saw that uh, the, uh, the agriculture sector grew by 3.9%, which was a strong growth. Um, and it's projected, <coughs> sorry, and it's projected to grow by 3% in uh, 2020. Now, this, along with a sector like a food sector, uh, which is also going to grow because especially the processed food, uh, which is linked to the agri uh, 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 commodity production in India, uh, is also going to grow. So if you look at companies like Britannia, ITC, Nestle in India, uh, Parley, for example, are doing record sales because uh, uh, the kind of people feel, uh, feeling the trust on the brand has gone up, 
uh, because they believe in food safety, they believe in the commitment of, uh, uh, of these companies and their brands. Uh, and therefore, uh, today, the health and wellness is catching up in everybody's mind. And they believe that this, uh, these brands are actually delivering uh, uh, and more so, yes, they are trying to, each of these companies are trying to do that. So what, what's happening is the food industry, processed food industry is doing well. Now, what is worrying is if the processed food and uh, 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 agriculture uh, are combining to give almost about 30% of the uh, uh, Indian economy is going to do well, uh, which, and when the Indian economy is going to shrink by 4.5%, which terribly says that uh, most of the other sectors are going to shrink badly. So when you're saying a minus 4.5% degrowth, uh, and you're saying agriculture, food process industry is going to grow up, uh, that means there could be a contraction of uh, uh, other industries, uh, even to the level of uh, 7 to 8%. And uh, frankly, it's worrying, number one. Number two is, uh, if you look at states like Tamil Nadu, um, uh, Karnataka, uh, Maharashtra, are all dependent, 85% of their economy, the state economy, is dependent on uh, non-farm uh, production, which means uh, these states are going to be severely hit uh, uh, because the industrial production is going to be hit and, and they are not dependent on the farm, on the farm products. Uh, states like MP, Punjab, Arunachal Pradesh, Andhra Pradesh, Kerala to an extent uh, uh, will have a better uh, uh, economy because their dependence on the agricultural economy is much higher than the non-farm products. So you will just going to see a difference between the state's economy per se. Uh, uh, you will going to see in terms of, as I said, from sector to sector is going to vary. Uh, you, I'm sure all of you know travel and uh, um, uh, tourism uh, is, is badly affected. So uh, um, what does it mean to us? Uh, also look at for a minute that, you know, uh, if the entire, there are so many things that is linked to the uh, global uh, market too. And therefore, suppose we are, uh, uh, um, we need to ensure within us, our country itself, uh, you know, the way we are handled COVID, uh, at some point of time was a little confusing. For example, there could be a lockdown in one place, another place could be opened up, trucks won't move from here. And, and actually speaking, there's a disruption of supply chain. Well, that's all we have moved away from that. But, it, uh, uh, but the fear of the number of cases today uh, could once again, uh, uh, say we already hear some states saying that we're going to lock down further. Some says no, we're going to open it up. So these confusions are still in a large way and which will disrupt the supply chain and the global, uh, uh, um, uh, you know, the thought process on India uh, could be alarmingly uh, different saying maybe yes, India is an important area for us to grow, but uh, is this the time? Uh, so we need to uh, uh, look at that from that perspective. When as GDP drops, when we say contracts to four and a half percent, we are also really telling that uh, what does it mean to people? Uh, it means that uh, there will be lower income, uh, there could be job loss, uh, and which also means to say that uh, it's going to be tough times ahead uh, uh, for the people. And and I don't know whether you saw today or yesterday there was a, a note from the Economic Times which says that. 50 So uh, the point that I would like to tell is about is it's a long drawn battle. Number one, uh, um, I, uh, we hear that you know the economy is getting back into uh, a trail after the uh, second quarter, which is a June month is looks could be good from industry production. But all these are at seventy to eighty uh, percent uh, uh, at the level of the pre-COVID. Now, now remember one thing: India was not doing so great pre-COVID also. So uh, after uh, post-COVID, you are saying 70 to 80 percent, which means you're already dropping 20 percent of the of the growth rate, uh, and you're not growing further. So it is not. Uh, 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 it is going to be at this level uh, as we move forward. So as industrialists, as uh, uh, organizations, uh, we are looking at what are the means to uh, uh, make our cash flow safe. How do you make sure our markets are protected? 
uh, how, um, and live through uh, this period of time uh, rather than really looking awesome. at how, how do I make huge profit. Uh, so it's more about a survival instinct right now to be uh, uh, making sure your market share is protected uh, um, uh, and uh, your, uh, specifically cash is the king at this particular point of time because uh, um, uh, there's every possibility of you know your overdues, your outstandings uh, vanishing uh, because the inability for your uh, uh, customers to pay you. So, uh, um, so one is that it's important that uh, uh, we need to be sure on the sectors that we focus. If we are looking at a fresh look, uh, we need to be very clear, clear in the sectors that we focus. Two is uh, we genuinely believe from a cargo perspective. Uh, uh, I don't. I mean, I rec I'm not recommending that to you, but it's up to you to take a call. Is to look at proactively look at what businesses are going to be affected forever. And uh, we, we have listed those businesses and said, we will no more invest in that business. Uh, so that's a hard call uh, because few of the businesses that we were doing in that uh, was uh, a good money maker. So, but uh, it's, a, it's a decision maybe for the next 12 months, 18 months, maybe it's changing the whole future, the way uh, uh, this. So uh, I think it's time that, you know, all of us as entrepreneurs, as people who run organization, it's critical to ask that question. Do I keep investing in the business or do I uh, um, um, say, because as I said, cash is king and uh, uh, you become more, see, let, let's look at, for example, the, uh, uh, we, we saw a slew of um, economic reforms, uh, or what uh, the Modi government was trying to do. And, and most of them, very frankly, were structural adjustments in taxes and uh, in bank loans and this thing. So uh, the point is, do you want to increase your debt? And when you increase your debt, are you clear that this is a business that will survive post-COVID? Then get into it for further investment. So that's a clear call that we are trying to do in our business and say, yes, this is a business for future. Go ahead for, for, for investment. This doesn't look to be a thing right now, halt investments. So that's a big call that a lot of companies are slowly trying to take. So uh, that's something which I would like to uh, uh, say. Uh, the, uh, the opportunity per se, I would say, is also is uh, the new COVID situation uh, opens up a huge amount of opportunity in terms of new business. So you look at, for example, I tell you, uh, uh, my own business, when I look at it, uh, I, we find that uh, this the shifting of the migrant labors back into Bihar and UP, uh, look at a place like Punjab, uh, Punjab or Kerala, where, you know, the migrant labors are shifting off. Uh, and they really don't know uh, because most of the farm output that the, these states produce are with the support of this migrant labors. Now, this is the time for mechanization in the farmland. And India has been talking about mechanization for ages. Somehow we have never disturbed it or we have never taken a reform from that perspective. And it's time that, you know, uh, 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 if we can do a, a, a mechanization of the farming, what could ha what happen is there are millions of uh, uh, of migrant labourers who have left industries, gone back to so for example uh, a state like Maharashtra could be really suffering from lack of this thing. So my own factories, we have twelve factories in India, uh, each having about between six hundred to thousand people working. So uh, uh, we suddenly have a twenty two percent, thirty three percent shortage depending upon the state. And what uh, uh, companies like us are looking at is. Uh, how do we automate our processes uh, 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 to a greater extent? Because India was always, you know, when we talk about it's the cheap labor uh, uh, as an arbitrage to automation. So, but now what is happening is this, say, say, uh, the, these companies like uh, Mondelez or uh, um, uh, you talk of Cargill, AD, all these companies are now talking about in a big way is to automate. Uh, so uh, is there an opportunity of a solutions that we can give these companies, uh, uh, um, uh, which could be much more local, which could be cost effective because they want to replace uh, 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 people. So uh, what I'm trying to say is there are opportunity areas. Look at, I just started off to say that, you know, our biggest opportunity starts from uh, a, a place like uh, what has happened to the supply chain from China. And, and it, it means that uh, it really gives us a huge opportunity for this. But are we really ready for it? One is to be uh, um, talking big about what we want to be. Two is uh, 
uh, what we want to do on the ground. Uh, uh, are we competitive uh, in terms of our manufacturing? It's just not about cheap labor. Cheap labor is no more a, a, a differentiator uh, to win a, a, a business. It's about uh, ensuring end-to-end -end supply chains. So uh, if you look at, uh, as of now, my own experience uh, sitting, uh, sitting in this, both Vietnam and Indonesia, two countries which are actually uh, 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 gaining most of the investment. Uh, more than, and, and in India, what happens is somewhere we want to say is about, uh, uh, we want to take on a China, uh, but you know, we need to see at every level of competitiveness. We need to be from a, from a basic the starting of a company to a land acquisition, to a manufacturing cost, electricity cost, labor cost, labor reforms, road transportation, port facility. We got to compete every single perspective. And if we are not going to do that, uh, uh, we will continue to say these words and people come to us just for the market uh, rather than India becoming a global export hub uh, for the world. What, what China has done in the last 30 years is something very difficult for us to duplicate. So we need to move away from, uh, 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 from, uh, from our vision. Uh, while we have a vision, we, we need to also uh, uh, look at uh, in terms of how do we want to put in this. So that's a larger uh, issue with the government. Very frankly, uh, we companies, especially the multinationals, are uh, crying to the government at different lobbies to say that make us competitive for us to shift. Uh, and when we say competitive, we are only talking of the speed, the, speed, the logistic cost, for example, is one of the costliest in the world, is, is India. Uh, um, the port facilities are still far away from, a, a, we say, Rotterdam or a Singapore or a, 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 a in China. So we have to really, uh, and, and I'm sure the government realizes it. So believe me, the entire bureaucracy, you go and talk to them. They all know better than us uh, what's really happening. But uh, uh, it's time for us to change every aspect. You saw a big liberalization uh, activity that happened in the agriculture sector. Uh, in fact, the Modi government has done uh, some phen phenomenal work. I would say post-1991 liberalization, uh, these agriculture uh, reforms, what the Modi government has just bought, uh, is to be really, uh, uh, um, uh, I would say, an important movement in India, uh, where we removed the Essential Commodity Act, we removed, uh, we are becoming uh, no more, the, the, uh, uh, restructured the APMC Act, um, the uh, agri-tech per se. So here there are huge opportunities that's coming. Uh, uh, I, I would say an agri-food sector is, is going to be very interesting because you know, uh, the fundamental fact that India is one of the lowest uh, countries in the world where uh, uh, India is a, uh, uh, the second largest uh, uh, agriculture producer in the world. But the conversion of an agriculture product into a, a, a food product, uh, a food processing, is as low as 7%. Uh, compare, you compare that to China, which is around 28, 29%. Uh, Philippines is 72%. The uh, US is 70%. And that's where you create value. And that value, if you can do creation in India, uh, and that is where uh, uh, somebody... So I believe the, the reforms that uh, uh, the Modi government has done on the uh, uh, agriculture uh, is uh, uh, really to be applauded for a phenomenal work. So opportunities are available. Uh, uh, it's about you know each industry looking at their own perspective. Uh, one, two, uh, don't try to invest into businesses where you think that there is no future. Uh, the change because of COVID, because you you get maybe it's your dear business today, but that could be a hard call that you need to talk take rather than get to more debt. Uh, from an economic crisis, the worst thing that can happen to a country is when you have a health crisis and then you have an economic crisis, <coughs> adding is, please, please let us, what we need to make sure is we need to avoid a food crisis in a country like us. Well, it's not a country for, for us, but for everybody in the world, but you could understand why it's important to India. And if we do not have, a, if, we, if we have a food crisis, uh, believe me, uh, if we will land up in 
in, in a terrible situation. Now, fortunately, fortunately, as I, I was just telling you right now is one of the 1969 famine that hit India is always deep in the old politicians. You go into the, uh, any of meet these uh, old politicians, for example, you, you, you meet a, 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 a planning change like a Monte Singh Aluwalia, you meet a, 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 the, uh, the FACT chairman, all of them are still have that 1969 famine in their mind. And they said, under no circumstances, India should struggle uh, uh, once more like that. So, uh, which was a phenomenal act. And many of us, we talk about saying that the wheat is getting rotten, rice is getting spoiled, and why are this, uh, uh, um, um, these people do keeping it, storage. it. But somewhere, the larger purpose is that, uh, you know, you look at what happened today. Uh, we talked about the migrant labors. One of the biggest relief we had is the storage of grains that we had. We had tremendous storage, uh, uh, in fact, though that's a, another economic problem which the country has and needs to be corrected, but it has come in a right time to help us, uh, to give a 2 kg free or 4 kgs or whatever it is we, we call for the migrant labors. So we have to, at any point of time, avoid food crisis. Now, when I say avoid food crisis, there's a huge trade in the globe that takes place. And therefore, in the spirit of nationalism, we might start uh, 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 bringing trade wars. And once you get a trade war, uh, uh, we could suddenly land up in a position where we can serve our people for food. For example, India uh, um, is a very dependent on edible oil. If you like it or not, India, India is one of the biggest consumers of edible oil in the world. And we are the biggest exporters of edible oil in the world. We almost export, uh, uh, if I'm right, about uh, $15 billion, mainly from Malaysia and Indonesia. But uh, uh, if we are getting into, uh, now I just talked about one example, and therefore just imagine across the world, there's so much of trading that takes place between, for commodities, uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and, and we have to ensure, uh, as uh, um, uh, the citizen of this world, to ensure that, you know, our political conflicts uh, and our nationalistic feelings uh, should not avoid, uh, should ever come into the factor of uh, 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 letting off the free trade in the world. Uh, and that is a fear that uh, what uh, con uh, companies like Cargill is seeing because there's a rise of nationalism in uh, every, every country that we talk about, whether it's US, whether it's UK, whether it's India, there is a, uh, that rise of this. So we've got to be sensitive and sensible in our approach of nationalism. Uh, uh, it is not just, uh, I mean, uh, uh, maybe many of you will disagree with me or a few of you may agree with me also. Yes? It's not about just calling about oh, tomorrow I will not take Chinese policies. It is about the ability to keep getting ourselves ready and competitive as what a Chinese does as a country. And that is where we take on a China. And not by saying tomorrow onwards our supply chain is stopped. So what happens to the, all the companies that you have agreed to for the investment in India? So uh, uh, your walk the talk is missing. And this is exactly where uh, I would say being listening to external stakeholders of a large company like Cargill is the trust on a country like India that uh, will they change the policy tomorrow? So in all these things, there's a little bit of low ranking for India. Uh, it is important for uh, a country for us to walk the talk. Uh, uh, and when, pe when companies come and invest, please understand, uh, 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 when a cargo invests, uh, it's not only about the thousand employees it gives, but it also is giving about another hundred, or, uh, at least uh, um, uh, 50 to 100 uh, uh, subunits to uh, flourish in India. So somebody is not seeing everything. We, we take calls emotionally. I think it's time for, for us to, uh, especially in a crisis time, it's not about uh, uh, we need to have a free trade in this world. And now just imagine we import cotton from US. We convert that cotton into uh, 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 fabrics and, uh, and re-export. So we create value creation here. And the, same, and, we, uh, and, and the same US country, we export shrimps. We are one of the biggest exporters of shrimps. Now let's imagine if both the countries decide uh, that uh, we are nationalistic and therefore um, um, I will not buy any more cotton from US. I will grow in India and US uh, decide that I will not take shrimps from India, but I'll grow in US. 
the quality of shrimps that you produce in US will be terrible. The quality of corn, I'm sorry, quality of cotton that you can produce in India can be terrible. You don't become globally competitive. We're killing the trade. And ultimately, both will lose. So uh, uh, what I could see, this is a perspective from me, that this nationalistic feeling will actually kill trade on a long run. Uh, and therefore, uh, it's not good for the global economy. You like it or not, uh, we might say the pluses and minus of uh, capitalism that has happened to this world, but still it is the best system today available with us. Uh, I wouldn't say that uh, it's the, uh, the best, but it's the best available system that we can follow till we get an alternative. So uh, um, uh, my worry uh, al almost stems out from the, uh, the very uh, this feeling of nationalism, which is, uh, for example, uh, uh, we had talked about uh, uh, so many Indias in the, la in the in the recent past, make in India, uh, or, and now we said about self-reliance. So what we are trying to do might be is when we put a vision across the country, uh, it, it should not be changing every year. Uh, 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 what we find, now this is a view of a multinational company who might not even tell this to the Indian government because uh, they wouldn't be worried if they tell that, will that be taken in the wrong spirit? So uh, there are many times that we don't even tell uh, because I am the voice of the company and uh, we've been clearly told that don't talk about this. But uh, since this is within our group here, I'm just talking is about uh, um, uh, we should not keep on changing our vision uh, every year for a country like India. So what happens in a self-reliance is uh, we suddenly call for uh, uh, um, uh, Indian companies to become large, which, is, which should be our internal thought process, how we do it, what we do it, make Indian competitive, but understanding the larger picture that the world has to live interdependent. And if you do not think that you can be interdependent, it's going to be very difficult. So that's, uh, 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 that's another crisis to be very frankly, slowly rising this world. Now it's not India alone. It is also, you saw what is happening in the Brexit. You're not seeing what, what Trump is talking about. Uh, the world has moved behind. Uh, and it's not good at a crisis time like a COVID crisis. That, and that's very critical. The next uh, 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 kind of a, a crisis that we are seeing happening is the, uh, uh, the, the psychological crisis, which we call is because we find that uh, uh, people uh, are uh, getting into, uh, uh, the, uh, into what we call the possibility of getting into a mental disorder. There is fear, worry, and concern. Uh, um, uh, and we, are, uh, as an organization, we are trying to address that to our employees. We have about 5,000 people working in, in India uh, and, and, and uh, about 160,000 across the world. And, and we are really trying to remove this part of, uh, of, you, know, uh, uh, of, of you know, how do you eliminate uh, and how do you give an employer comfort? Unfortunately, in India, we don't have the social security. So what happens is, I, I can give an example of what one company did in uh, Europe is about, so when they decide that they don't run a factory because they don't have the uh, demand to do it, the employees are linked to the social security scheme. And a social security scheme takes care of about, in a specific country, I think it's Switzerland, uh, there takes about 80% of the salary has been paid by them. Okay. So the company stepped forward to say, I'll pay the balance 20%. So, but in a country like India, I don't think so. We have this kind of support system. So suppose we, I have a factory of thousand employees working and my demand has dropped to 50%. And it happens. It is happening. Uh, uh, I can tell you my own, uh, 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 one of my factories where a particular raw material for uh, uh, confectionery. Confectionery is a discretionary uh, uh, consumption item and demand has crashed. And now you just imagine, I have thousand people working, what do I do with the thousand people? And imagine if you want to keep paying for the thousand people, your cash flow is dead. You can't run and you can't, uh, so companies can pay for some time. So what is happening in a country like India is, you don't have a social security that takes care of these people. And therefore in India, it is becoming very difficult and, and people are going through, uh, uh, many of us may not uh, uh, face it, but there are many employees, I would say, uh, across this country who are going through this joblessness, who are, are living in the fear whether I'll have a job tomorrow. 
and this is creating a mental disorders with people. So uh, I, I would, uh, like Cargill has done, uh, it's my learning is about, uh, uh, though we have this uh, no social security in India, I know it is difficult in India to run companies uh, without, ca without cash flow, uh, but uh, putting people first uh, is an important criteria. Now, uh, how do you pay salaries? Is, is there something that you need to do to restructure certain things? Uh, I'm not going to recommend what it is, but that is something what you should look uh, um, uh, um, uh, 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 um, and you know, uh, otherwise we are in a country that will lead to a, a, um, a major uh, 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 disorder perspective, which is not good for the country. And even today, if you look at even children uh, sitting at a home in a, in a uh, closed environment uh, are changing their mindsets. They become angry more. So these are uh, uh, changes that's happening in kids. Three months you're in a lockdown. Imagine you're in a flat. You can't go down. The child is stuck there. So uh, uh, let's be more empathetic uh, as leaders, as business heads, as people who run companies. I think it's important to be more empathetic at this point of time. And uh, uh, I'm sure uh, this will uh, really help uh, all these organizations which are empathetic to come much stronger uh, when things become normal. Uh, so that's very uh, uh, critical from, from a perspective of the COVID situation today. Uh, uh, and the last thing that I will talk about is about uh, uh, how do we uh, get into a normalcy. I think uh, um, as uh, um, um, we have got the, the new normal is the uh, normal, uh, uh, I'm just, I'm, tr I'm talking is about uh, uh, transformation and adaptability. Um, industries, as I said, demands can go. There was a time when just about three months back, I can read through a book which says that uh, uh, mass tra uh, uh, transit systems will be big in, in, big in countries like India or in the world, eliminates car automobiles across the country and by 2030, you will have one third of the number of cars running because you will have much more uh, on a battery driven and therefore the, uh, the kilometer per run per kilometer cost is so low that it will take care of your to drop you anywhere in the world and you are seeing people changing the mindset also to are more willing to go into mass rapid uh, transport systems but today uh, the whole need is changing they're saying that am i safe am i secure so then the, the could be the, the automobile industry could go in for a much longer time of revival now. So uh, uh, the ability to transform and adapt in this situation uh, 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 has become uh, a thing. And as I said, there are a lot of new opportunities that is rising. The ability for each one of us uh, to sit in our business, brainstorm, and I'm sure uh, uh, it's not that it's a doomsday. Opportunities are coming uh, um, and that's a new norm. The new normal is about, uh, uh, about adapting and looking for new opportunities. Uh, and uh, my only concern I keep saying is don't invest into a business uh, uh, that uh, you may get into further debt, but doesn't have a growth in the future. So uh, uh, with this, uh, I would like to sum up and just say that, you know, uh, we as human beings, as, uh, as one every adversity that has come to us in our life, and I'm sure uh, uh, we will get over this also. But uh, it also leads us to a different type of life, a different way of living. Uh, um, and don't forget to be empathetic to your, uh, to your colleague, to your uh, employees, to your family members, your children, uh, because everybody is going through some kind of a crisis in their mind. Um, and, and this is our opportunity as leaders who could uh, guide this way for all these people. Thank you. I just any questions I can take. Yeah. Thank you, Simon, for a wonderful insight of uh, how India specific industries as well as people and the government has been proceeding. You've given us a lot of uh, takeaways today and indeed it's a very proud moment for our alumni group to have you on board to share your thoughts. We wanted to have this as a series from industry leaders like yourself, where 
you can give your own perspective and as a first of the series it's really really a pleasure to hear from you today about the industry leaders perspective and as uh, members here i think all of us should be getting a lot of benefits out of your you know sharing of thoughts and your knowledge especially the most important one being the key factor being be empathetic towards your family towards your employees towards your customers and towards your suppliers that is one of the key things and apart from that you know to understand the larger picture about what is happening from your perspective when you have told definitely for people uh, in our group it's going to help a lot now we would like to definitely take questions from members and if you can kindly members can post it on the chat we can take one by one tarik one second na tarik one second yeah uh, uh, tarik uh, we have mr vt murthy the chairman of icc uh, indian chemical council here welcome uh, sir we like to we like to have a few words from uh, mr vt murthy please please welcome mr murthy so mr murthy sir So, Mr. Murthy. Hello. I think he is on mute, Mo Gopi. You should ask ah. him to unmute. Yeah. How do we unmute it now? Yeah, yeah. yeah please. Turn the fan button. Okay, we'll, okay, we'll, okay. We'll go ahead. We'll go ahead. As and when he gets unmuted, we'll we'll make him say a few words. No problem. Sure. Yeah. Now we can have the questions. Anybody? Anybody? Anybody in the yeah. group ha having questions can uh, pose a question. So there is one question by Mr. Ashok. I think he's posting it. Uh, Shiva, you can unmute Ashok, and he can post his question directly as well. Yeah, yeah, I got it unmuted. Okay, can I go ahead? Yeah, go ahead, sir. Uh, this uh, question is for Mr. Simon. Simon, uh, thank you uh, for the excellent uh, presentation. You have given enlightened us with uh, the latest uh, challenges and the new normal. And my question is, uh, you said that the opportunities are going to be for the mechanization of uh, farming and uh, also the automation and uh, to replace the manpower and all that. Fine. but is there can you suggest anything for a small scale industry what is that they can do one question one question two is you said that capitalism is the best uh, available uh, system you are, i agree with you totally but looking at uh, the some of the europe countries now the social security and other aspects i think the socialistic uh, countries or system is also is i think it's equally good this is what i feel This, what, what do you say about it? This is these are the two questions. Is it clear, Simon? Yeah, it's clear. So let me answer the second question first. Uh, uh, the, the Western social security is built on a backup of a good capitalist approach. Uh, um, so uh, 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 and therefore they were able to. Uh, uh, so that is uh, uh, what I'm trying to say is the approach of your uh, business per se. Uh, as more or less you took the western europe is on the capitalistic outlook but they have taken care from a, uh, from a, a social security perspective so what happens is uh, if you look at the uh, uh, the business models are based on capitalistic outlook but individual support systems from the government sector is more socialistic so if, if uh, you look at it um in the western europe the taxes that they collect and the social security is collect is much higher than india uh, uh, it's about uh, it goes up to even the level of 40 to 45% but the fundamental fact is that uh, uh, when you are uh, the kind of support that the government does it's also linked with that there's a value for the money you pay there uh, um uh, so socialistic is from a protection of human uh, say is what they look and not in their business approach business approach is about to make money make profitability and therefore create a uh, uh, value creation and, and therefore the employees get benefit the shareholders 
So the shareholders' benefit keeps coming as the number one priority in the way they do business. Um, number two, your question is about. Uh, see, um, um, I'm not uh, here to really uh, uh, to say that. Uh, what are the opportunities in each business now? While I was just just talking about automation and mechanization is something which is so relevant to my business and my industry. Uh, uh, let me tell you just uh, is to just, uh, uh, add to that I am a part of the Punjab uh, uh, government. Uh, um, uh, so there's a team that has been set uh, uh, under Mr. Aluwalia uh, to rebuild Punjab. Uh, and, and I've been lucky to be a part of that team. Uh, so one of the things that comes strongly is about, uh, uh, so in that particular situation, uh, uh, the mechanization means uh, how do we uh, eliminate people? Now, when I said that, uh, this is an opportunity for a small scale industry in Punjab or elsewhere to reform your thinking and create. So the ability to adapt and change is the most important for the MSMS. Uh, uh, and it's not somewhere if we are stuck that this is what I can know and what I do, uh, it is going to be difficult. Uh, so and that's why I said the ability to see the future uh, uh, a bit more and invest in that is very critical. Yeah, uh, the next one, I think Mr. Ashok, you got the answer. Uh, now the next question is from uh, Mr. Vishwanath GS, uh, 82 batch. This question is with over 50% of the population in India in agriculture, do we not have a better prospect in this situation than USA with 2% in agriculture? Uh, this is the question, Mr. Simon. Okay. So uh, I, I, if I understand right, the question is that 50% of our employment is in agriculture and, and that gives us a better prospect. Is that what is the question? Yeah, I think so because... Okay. Uh, Okay, yeah. Yeah. so let, 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 let me try to answer that question. So first of all, uh, 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 maybe today that's a, that's a great situation because 50% uh, of the employment comes up. But what happens is uh, we are one of the lowest, uh, 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 many of the products, a few of we are doing well, for example, be the output per acre, output per human being. So what was important for India per se? Now I'm, I'm now talking not about COVID. Just prior to COVID, let's say the situation was normal. Uh, we had to increase the productivity of the farmland. And that is because, uh, uh, please understand one thing, the, the world population is about 7 billion now. And it is uh, going to touch 10 billion by 2050. And we have, this, uh, and you know, you have all kinds of environmental issues of cultivating, you have problems in terms of water availability, uh, all these issues across the world is coming across. Now, therefore, you need to produce more with the existing land. And therefore, modernization of farming is important. And that can take place in India only if urbanization takes place. Because the more and more urbanization takes place, more and more people will leave villages, go and get into a job into urbanization, which means your 50% dependence of the people will come down, mechanization goes up, output goes up, and this is the only way India is going to feed its people. Uh, so, uh, uh, so having said that, that's going to be the long term. Please remember, even after COVID, today I'm, I'm, I'm only saying today it has helped us because uh, um, uh, under uh, um, uh, uh, Mandrega, uh, uh, saying most of them are getting some jobs there, and where your government spending is taking place. And therefore, at this point of time, it's about. Uh, not to be too much worried about from an economic perspective, but it's more about putting people first. And therefore, uh, uh, money transferring into these pockets of these ordinary people uh, will help uh, uh, soften the crisis. And therefore, uh, at this level, so is it the, is it the right model for India? Uh, I don't think so. That's the right model. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next question is from uh, Mr. Dhanasegaran, 81 batch. Uh, Dhanasegaran, sir, I am unmuting your mic so that you can go ahead with your question. Uh, 
sorry, I couldn't do it from here. Maybe I'll read the question. Uh, the question from his side is, uh, I request to give profile of Cargill where you cover for the procurement list with quantities and if possible, the item being uh, items being imported into India. This was the question from Mr. Dhanasegaran, 81 Chemical. Okay, this is uh, more of a business talk. Um, so anyway, I'll just see, we are, I, I said Cargill is a, a, a $2.3 billion company in India. Uh, we are into uh, different sectors. Um, we are into the edible oil business. We are into the corn uh, uh, processing business. We are into commodity business. We are into cocoa and chocolate business. We are into uh, um, uh, what do you call this? Uh, uh, bio industrial products business. Uh, we are into animal nutrition business. And we are also into the trade capital market where financial structuring has been done for companies. Now, having said this, uh, it, it, so it, it has different uh, thing. Uh, anything that is in, we can always talk separately uh, on, on what we can, uh, uh, you want to know specifically from each of these businesses. Yeah, thank you, Simon. Yeah. Uh, we have Eril Maran, who is into automation and robotics in our group. And he has uh, something to ask you. Go ahead, Eril. Hello, sir. Hello. Good, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. It's a very nice talk to talk to you, sir. And uh, actually, I am. We are from uh, robotics and automation solution to uh, automotive and non-automotive industry. Generally, uh, I have a question. We are also uh, for manufacturing sector. We are providing solution in robotics. So, what kind of opportunity in Cargill? We are uh, done providing solution. Is possible any robotic solution is in uh, Cargill? Question number one. Hmm. And question number two, what about the agricultural automation in India generally? Even in uh, New Zealand and Australia, we're looking at our uh, other partners, Japanese partners, they are very good doing in agricultural automation. But what about the Indian market? How about the Indian market size, sir, actually? Okay, say uh, 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 two things. The first one, uh, I would suggest that you get a contact uh, uh, of mine and I can help you out to put you the right people. Because uh, uh, companies like us, what we do is, we want to reduce the human touch as much as possible, number one, uh, on a friend, especially because we are doing a food product. Food safety is the most critical part of anything that we do. Uh, I can give you an example simply so quickly is that uh, we have put up a plant in a place called Dawangiri, about 300 kilometers from Bangalore, where we invested $125 million. And, and in, in response to a, a competition, an Indian company would have done the same thing at 30 million. Now, uh, what is the difference? The difference is about food safety. Uh, difference is about automation. So uh, companies like us, there are many in India, uh, uh, and there are many Indian companies who are now looking, seeking for these kind of uh, uh, manufacturing practices. Uh, I, uh, you can connect with me uh, uh, on what we can do, but there is a huge opportunity that is rising. Uh, as I said, because the shift the migrant labors, number one. The second question that you asked is about the agricultural thing. Please remember one thing, the shift of migrant labors uh, are also taking place into a higher number into states like Bihar, UP, where, where automation, where mechanization might not take as early because of the shift that will take place. But a place like Kerala, Punjab, uh, uh, I think you need to create solutions. Uh, I, uh, um, and these solutions, we are not in that business, but uh, these are uh, already available in the world. Uh, it is about working with um, uh, uh, um, the Punjab government, the, uh, because I, I'm repeating Punjab because I'm part of that team there. Uh, and there's a lot of emphasis that will take place in the coming months on mechanization of farming. I think this is a big opportunity along with the reforms with the, which the Modi government has declared in agriculture, I think uh, the farm sector could, uh, could really benefit from your automation uh, uh, part, uh, sorry, mechanization part in the farm sector. I may not be able to tell you exactly what it is. I, would, I am not an expert, but I believe that uh, from what I understood, there's a huge opportunity that is going to arise. So keep your ears and eyes open, look at what you can do, look at your collaboration, uh, and, uh, and connect with people uh, uh, who are into this field in this world uh, and, and what is that you can do. For example, you can look at each state in terms of what they, and who, who really are looking for this 
um, and look at what are the crops they do. They do a wheat, rice, sugarcane, what it is, and what is the kind of uh, mechanization that you can bring across. I'm sure uh, uh, things are changing. That's a, this is the future prospect that uh, uh, the COVID situation is bringing to us. Thank you, Simon. Thank you. Eril, you have uh, any clarification? All right. Gopi, uh, Murthy, sir, can you? Um, see, in uh, Andhra, you are in a uh, corn business. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Andhra, of course, is one of the major corn producers. Uh, one of my friend is supplying uh, some uh, uh, biomass uh, drying equipment. Well, he always complains uh, that uh, the margins which uh, you leave to the farmer is very small, and they, are, they want to cut corners everywhere in the drying process. Because the corn, after they take out the corn, they reuse it for producing the necessary seed for dry. Uh, is it possible yeah, to, yeah, to yeah. mechanize the proper way? Murthy sir, you are younger Is it possible to automate that, yeah, you are saying? Uh, no. Mechanize that. Is it, is it possible to standardize the mechanization everywhere? Because somebody is putting up uh, a good uh, drying, a biomass drying, someone wants to cut corners here and there, it affects naturally the quality of their corn, and then it gets rejected, and then they sell it to somebody. So I think the process needs some sort of a technology see, input see, from uh, the okay, uh, uh, so, uh, I, I would suggest you contact us uh, because we, we are a, a, a large producer of these byproducts. Uh, we, uh, we do a little bit of biomass. In fact, uh, we are trying to eliminate even that wastage, uh, uh, um, uh, not to go through biomass, but uh, uh, more usage into a cattle feed and things the same. We can help you out. Yeah. But moreover, if you ask me about uh, uh, standardization of process, it's like corruption in India. Uh, uh, we all are talking about removal of corruption, but corruption never goes out of it. It's about uh, uh, the, 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 the attitude will change that we require as, as, as a people. It's not about politicians telling us tomorrow we're going to change. Similarly, uh, 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 principles like you know, food safety, safety of our employees, uh, which is, believe me, in the last 10 years has been absolutely going up. And that, that is where we might lack today to bring the best of those uh, 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 um, uh, things into this world. But I'm sure India is there in the next five, 10 years, India will really see these things moving up because uh, uh, what we are, we are actually as a country, we are skipping technologies. Uh, uh, so there are technologies which has proven, but by the time we enter in that technology is skipped and we go to India. So we, we, uh, for us at, at the, in all these areas, uh, we can be much ahead uh, of getting the latest technologies. Uh, it's available. We can help you out. Though we are not an expert in the, uh, the biomass, but we can definitely help you. You can just contact me, I, I can connect you with people. Yeah, we have a question from uh, Kumar, P.S. Kumar. How do mechanization in India, since farms are not like you as huge farms, many farms are owned by small and medium level farms for whom investing or hiring high-end modern agri equipment is not possible. Uh, uh, very good, uh, very good point. And this is a problem in India. Uh, uh, so uh, this is where uh, we are advocating to the government is about to build cooperatives, number one. Number two is the dependence on the agriculture has to be reducing, especially the employment. So you are today having 50% of the employment from the agriculture sector, uh, uh, unless you're willing to uh, uh, move and change. So you want to see a larger objective. What do you want to become in agriculture? So, unfortunate thing is what the major reforms we did during uh, 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 at some point of time uh, uh, has been all these days in terms of uh, uh, our agriculture policy has almost remained very inward looking. Uh, um, and, and as I said, this is a big vote bank for the politicians. They don't disturb them, they protect them and ultimately make them incompetent in the world. 
Uh, so the point is, uh, um, uh, people, uh, companies like Cargill are, at, at, uh, uh, are in the advocacy forum to tell the government that why mechanization is important. And therefore, it's not just because of Cargill's benefit or something. You look at the population that will happen in 2050 for India. Is there, all the rivers are, are, are the rivers giving you enough water? Is that river, rivers and water will give you enough of food to be produced by so-and-so? We need to look at a really look, uh, relocate. Maybe a very sensitive topic like genetically modified GM uh, crops. Uh, it's been used. In, so we are not looking at uh, 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 phenomenal reforms in the country. Uh, we have uh, 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 within our groups, when I say group within our country, fighting on principles and ideals we think is right and, uh, and no decisions are delayed. And somewhere when a crisis comes, we all rush through a decision. So point is, you're right, today with a small farmland, uh, average of three, uh, three hectares, how do you do mechanization? So it's about creating cooperatives, moving out of people from this thing into more urbanization, therefore they reduce the number of people. So all these things only will drive. It is just not about, uh, so today, uh, the shift of migrant laborers is creating a big problem in Punjab. They're not able to, uh, who is there to go to the farm? So therefore now a need is arising. So that's why I'm just saying today need is arising to a certain, but uh, um, it's important that as a country, uh, we need to really uh, uh, reformulate these things. So it takes a lot of time, very frankly. Uh, but one thing good about the government is they're willing to listen. Uh, um, um, point is, uh, all I'm just trying to feel is, let's move from a little bit of listening into, an, into a quick action on the ground. Uh, that is what is delaying the country. People understand today. So Tariq, if there is no more questions, I can have a cup of coffee. I'm sorry, I'm not able to hear you guys. Tariq, any questions? Yeah. Was there a question? Sorry, Gopi, I didn't miss, I missed it. I couldn't hear it. No, I was just trying yes, to ask Tarek if there's any question. Simon, I think uh, the question part of it is over. And we thought we will uh, have Paul Sebastian interact with you as well as uh, uh, your bachelor. Manik Kumar, uh, Manik Kumar uh, is there, then Masik is there. I, I could see Paul on the corner and I was trying to say hello to him. But you know, in the middle of it, I couldn't say it. Hi, Paul. How are you? Uh, you you're on the mute. I can see your glass, but I couldn't see the mute. <laughs> <laughs> no, that means there's a glass to celebrate a good conversation. <laughs> Hi, Paul. So, where are you, Paul? You're in Chennai or you're in Indonesia still? Malaysia. Oh, you're in Malaysia. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, for those who don't know, Simon and I go back from school in Chennai, right? Yeah. And he was, uh, he, he was my captain of my school football team. You know how good or bad the team was, yeah? <laughs> but no, more importantly, you know, the, the first question was, good goalkeepers make good CEOs or presidents of companies. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Protecting the money and, you know, the EBITDA of the company, right? Yeah. That's a good one, Paul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Simon was a really good goalkeeper in school, but uh, I think he uh, dropped off the uh, soccer scene back in college in the Nanante days, yeah. Fascinated by chemical engineering, Paul, so I just thought. <laughs> yeah, that, that goes over here. I'm fascinated by chemical engineering as well. <laughs> no, but anyway, it's a, it was a nice talk, Simon. You know, I've been an entrepreneur for the last eight years, you know, so... Mm. I've been in the paper business, so it's also chemical engineering, you know, the wood and paper, sure. pulp and paper. This is actually chemical engineering in many ways. And uh, so this is the first time the crisis is so bad that June going forward, the uncertainty is so bad, demand has disappeared, right? Yeah. So what 
was 100%, today it's like 30, 25% is the only demand, right? And people, True. the whole cash supply systems has changed. People are not paying, you know? So it's mm -hmm. got into some, some sort of a standstill. To the extent now, the question that's being asked is, how much of capacity will be taken off? Because yeah. if there's no demand, you can't keep producing how long, right? Till the warehouses yeah, are sure. full, right? And then what it, what it uh, automatically implies is prices will start crashing. So the last man standing kind of a thing starts coming in. Protection starts coming because it's a global player, right? Yeah. So Indonesia yeah, sure. is big. Uh, you have the US, Canada. So this other worrying uh, things, you know. And uh, so, like you said, very rightfully, in uh, any business, for example, in paper, two areas of paper business which will continue to, continues to grow is the tissue paper business, right? Mm -hmm. So hospitals mm -hmm. are demanding more. People are taking a lot more care of wiping their hands and, you know, wet wipes and stuff. And the second thing is food packaging and deliveries, right? Whether sure. it's Amazon or Flipkart or Swiggy or, you know, Zomato, the demand mm -hmm. for takeaways and take-home stuff is growing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so that, that, that's exactly what I'm also trying to do and say like, hey, you know, you can't sit with the whole model because sure. this demand, supply to match demand and uh, prices crashing, people holding stocks, losing money, right? So, so we, are, but, we are a big supplier of uh, starch to paper industry. Okay, corn uh, starch? Uh, uh, yeah, this is, from India, it's corn starch. Yeah. So you have, you have some modified starches or corn starches. So, but um, the paper industry in India also similar to what you said. Uh, in fact, in April it was uh, it was just ten percent. Okay. Uh, May it was about twenty five percent. June is around back to about thirty five percent. But uh, as you said, both these industries that we supply one is textiles, another is the um, uh, um, paper. paper yeah. Both have been very badly affected. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Go ahead, go ahead, sorry. So, so, you know, uh, one of the things I'd like to point, I mean, you, you, everyone says so many great things about India, but I think India screwed up as far as continuous process industries are concerned. They shouldn't have shut them down. In most parts of the world, they never shut continuous process industries down, which is China, Indonesia. They allow them to continue because you can't stop and start those businesses, right? True. It will kill you in terms of cost. But India has shut down the paper factories. Yeah. Right? And uh, then you're begging and trying to, you know, uh, come back into production. So your cost competitiveness goes in many ways. True. Yeah. So I'll tell you an example because uh, we also compete within Cargill China and Cargill India for the Southeast Asian market space. Right. Uh, very frankly, when China was declared for uh, coronavirus, we thought that's the biggest very opportunity for India to step in in its ports. Can yeah. you believe me? I couldn't even ship one container, <laughs> irrespective of any damn coronavirus. Uh, uh, um, uh, all material were going right on uh, dot to the customer from China. No yeah. issues. Yeah. No issues. Yeah. And, and, and the, yeah, and the factory that what we have in China, uh, similar to Dhangiri, is five times bigger than us. Yeah. It is just making sure every customer served. We were ashamed. We thought this is the biggest opportunity India is having. Yeah. But, and when, when the corona hit India, we had to close our plants. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 and I think uh, a couple of mistakes that we did was, even when we are declaring a lockdown, what we should have left is the industries to run. Yes. If we had Absolutely. left industries to run Absolutely. And, and made the, the women of the world, the uh, elderly people of the world sit yeah. at home, yes. locked down. Yes. If the industries are done, uh, actually speaking, uh, we would not have had this economic problem today. Uh, yes. It would have been still there, but it's not as bad as what it is today. Uh, yes. We could have been in a little more better shape. Yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, anyway, it is what it is, right? Yeah, and sure. uh, like you said, uh, uh, the, uh, the world has changed, but uh, I think the problems will be solved. It's only a vaccine away, right? Yeah, the phrase absolutely. will be a vaccine absolutely. away. Yeah. Yeah. And probably there are about 390 patents which are being... Uh, Moving past the medical stage one and to whatever else, right? Yeah. yeah so, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think there's going to be a fundamental shift in terms of people, uh, real estate and properties and buildings values going off, right? And uh, people working from home and stuff that's big. 
all tech companies, if you look at the NASDAQ, that's growing. Yeah. It's gone past pre-COVID highs, even greater highs, yeah. right? Yeah. The prices, they've disrupted uh, the doctors. Teledoc, if you take the stock, you know, I mean, they saying like you can start going onto your screen, Zoom call, and you can get your problem solved, right? Yeah. Teledoc, Zoom itself, right? What was a $30 share today is $250, right? I mean, yeah. so there are opportunities, like you said, and I think there are, the world has got a lot more investors into the stock market because people have time, right? Yeah, so I, they're driving I, I, the market more than anybody else, right? So uh, there are these fundamental shifts, which I think uh, if you're a progressive minded person, you've got to understand it as well and you know, find other avenues of creating income, right? Yeah, sure, it's sure. going to be important. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you do you guys do stuff like uh, um, animal fodder, like guar meal and stuff? Okay. Uh, uh, we, oh, we, we, we do uh, a lot of meals. For example, we have three businesses which works on animal fo uh, food, basic feed, we call it. So one is, uh, for example, the starch and sweetener. This is from corn. You have the corn gluten meal and the uh, uh, fiber. So that's one sort of a meal. Second is we have the soya based meal uh, uh, that we do. Uh, third is about our animal nutrition, health and nutrition itself, uh, which does a lot of uh, uh, pre mixes that we do. Uh, and the fourth is the corn itself as a trading for the uh, animal feed. Yes, okay. we are doing a lot of things in these things. Okay. That's good. Yeah. 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 Hope to catch That's, up with you in yeah, uh, sure today, uh, when I travel uh, yeah, post COVID. Yeah. Sure. Okay. We'll catch up. Nice Thank you. you. Good Thank you, Vipali. Yeah. Simon, Simon uh, if, you, if you don't mind. The... Yeah. Is it okay to take their questions if you don't mind? Sorry. No problem. What is the question? Uh, I'll uh, let them take the floor and ask. Sure, Patmarajan, sure. Okay. Patmarajan, he has raised his hand. Yeah, okay. And there's one more uh, person, he's uh, asked uh, Mr. Ratna Sabapati, I think, Radpati. I think it's Mr. Ratna. Yeah, okay. So I'll first have uh, Patmaraj ask his question. Patmaraj, please go ahead. He's from Saudi Arabia. Okay. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good afternoon. Thank you. It's a wonderful presentation. I am Patmaraja, Pipli 92 batch. Uh, very nice uh, to hear here a lot, even though a little bit uh, challenging a uh, lot, uh, but it is a good input. Uh, my question, sir, uh, it is basically for all our members to understand. You told, uh, it is a known fact also. Uh, the thing is, uh, <clears throat> uh, we are not uh, catching up against China a lot. Uh, you mentioned we are good in agriculture, but very poor in uh, food processing. Yet, it's a known fact. Uh, you told the figure also, it's uh, India is 7% and 28%. Uh, can you name what are all the food processing uh, which we can able to, you know, our members also could concentrate or a little bit diversify the business, which you have in your mind? That is one question. Second question is, I always believe by staying in abroad. In India, we are good in many ways in flexibilities, in hard work and many things. But I, I feel we are lacking in terms of, you know, positive attitude, attitude and um, some kind of discipline as compared to Chinese or rather uh, any other people. So could you please uh, just uh, get in your view for these two questions? Thank you. Okay. The first one is uh, um, uh, on the movement of agriculture to food processing. Uh, I can give you one small example. For, uh, for, uh, our, we lose about 50% uh, of our fruits uh, uh, gets perishes out after it's produced. Uh, can you convert that into, if you could, uh, see, this is where the government has now stepped in to put that, what you call the agri-tech, uh, one of the uh, pillars of revival of Indian econ of agriculture economy is that, is about bringing cold storages, logistics at the farm level. Uh, so, uh, um, uh, if, uh, let's say today uh, a business like a, a tomato ketchup, you, you know, 80% of the tomato ketchup uh, 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 comes from uh, the, uh, the, the base raw material from tomato purees comes from China. Uh, uh, so, the, 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 uh, uh, the good example of how it has worked well is look at a Fritole, went to Punjab, uh, 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 decided a particular type of uh, potato for the lace uh, thing, they worked together, 
the productivity is high. It's kind of, so therefore the wastage of uh, 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 of food pro is, is is there for the whatever the Punjab farmers produce, ninety five percent is consumed by companies like Fruitoli. So the aware, the point is today the farmer is not able to reach uh, the final customer in right time and right price, uh, uh, and therefore uh, um, uh, there is a, a huge infrastructure requirement within, and therefore the biggest opportunity for uh, I would say in that sector is. How do you bring in cold storages, logistics management of farms? See, I can tell you today, uh, uh, near Bangalore, uh, I forget the exact name of that company, um, but it's like called the Uber. So what, you, what the company has done is, uh, it has covered some uh, five districts or two for say, and just say, uh, whatever the farmer is linked to his app, uh, whatever he is able to uh, have a crop today, let's say I have 100 kilos of tomato, 10 kilos of chilies, you see, he, everything is captured at one point and the Uber fellow goes collecting everything from different farmers uh, in that particular district. So what happens is the moment you are able to collect on the day you produce and move into uh, um, um, the correct cold storages, for example, and there are the right storage conditions for that particular raw material or uh, farm produce, you are then actually increasing the shelf life. The, uh, and once you have the shelf life protected, then the, uh, all you need to do is every industry today, you look at what is happening to a Reliance Smart, the, the, the kind of, uh, uh, they're all looking at companies who can uh, uh, really link to their supply chain uh, because uh, handling Indian farmers actually is not very easy. Uh, so they all these big not want to directly get involved into a farmer. So people like us, if you're entrepreneurs, this is a good opportunity of looking at modernization of uh, a cold chain, supply chain. Uh, 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 it's going to be a big business in the agricultural world. And that's what the government is giving a lot of initiatives, uh, sorry, uh, um, um, incentives uh, to make that happen. I think that's an opportunity that we can really pick up. Thanks, so have you said that? Okay, yeah. Thanks. Sir. Don't, I mean, comparing China and India, uh, uh, seriously, um, um, I, I don't want to do that because uh, it's not the right time to do in a, uh, when we have emotions running high. But I think we, uh, uh, the best thing is just keep all these emotions away and say, uh, uh, let's try to meet this. Uh, what, what do you want to become in the world? Do you want to become a supplier in the world? Then you've got to beat China in, in their own area. So uh, it's about you know, creating our own capability. Uh, uh, let me tell you, if I leave my container from my factory, by the time I reach from uh, Devangir to um, Chennai, there are three check posters, people hold it, uh, ask 10 questions, and then you put it into a, 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 a see, you don't know whether you take the first. It's all confusion. Uh, uh, and, and, and to a foreigner, when you start telling that, uh, uh, this will come on 18th day of so and so date, and then it'll land up on 24th day. So, point is, uh, there is clear clarity in the way China operates. And that is actually not China, globally they operate it. We need to improve our efficiency in port, our efficiency in logistics. I think it's, it, it, it is not that we have not improved, but what has happened is the, the Chinese are much improved, much higher than us. Uh, and we are somewhere, what happens in our thought processes we have improved and we are happy about it. Uh, but it is not meeting global expectations. And therefore, uh, people who are handling global trade gets into frustration with India. Uh, uh, believe me, a lot of frustration starts place. When you, um, the, I can tell you, for example, we do uh, trading of metal ore. Uh, so we, uh, we, we transport uh, ore from any particular country which is available to a country of, uh, uh, which requires uh, us. Uh, Suddenly policy changes. So uh, imagine a company like Cargill invested because you have a policy in place and you know, you're not even taking industrial outlook. So these are the things uh, uh, we are not walking. We don't do the walk the talk. Uh, 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 while we say, uh, I keep repeatedly saying, we should not keep on changing our vision. Make in India once, then we say self-reliant India, then we say something. So that uh, to you and me, it is all about, you know, uh, we all get charged up because our prime minister is saying that. Because for us, it's our prime minister. But for others, what the hell is happening to this country? 
uh, every year they're changing their own goals in this thing. So where one to take? So we are actually confusing the investor. Thanks, Simon. Yeah. Uh, we'll have the last question. Uh, Mr. Ratpati, I think, uh, Mr. Ratna Sapapati, I think, I guess, he's mentioned my question went unnoticed. Sir, can you please uh, come on board and ask your question? I'm unmuting you. Uh, good afternoon, Simon. Just, uh, I have a question. Please uh, identify you... yourself, sir. Yeah, I'm Ratna Sabhapati, 81 batch. Good afternoon, sir. Oh, welcome. Uh, can you suggest a model uh, for our uh, native village? We have farmlands. Uh, can I group some of the farmers and uh, make it viable instead of going for paddy and other things? Good question. I think it's time that we need to think about our uh, farming as such. Rice and wheat are two, uh, 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 sugar cane are, are crops which really takes, drains away of water. Uh, uh, and, and you know, our water tables are becoming depleted uh, year by year. Um, so it is important that we need to restructure uh, the crop pattern. And so for example, uh, cro crops like corn, crops like uh, um, uh, millets, uh, which, which have to turn to be more stable food for us, then to stick on into uh, a, a rice and a wheat. Now, having said that, I'm not an expert to tell you what is your land, what is the soil that you have. So we need to do all those uh, testing. Uh, and, and very frankly, please look at the latest government reforms. Uh, I, 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 as I said, I really applaud the Modi government on that uh, 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 decision that they have done on the agri reform. Please have a look at it and see what it helps you. Uh, uh, and more importantly is changing crop depends upon also your soil. Uh, um, see, uh, what, uh, let me tell you one important thing since this is the last question. Uh, this country could go into a big shift to digitalization in agriculture. Uh, though uh, you might not be seeing today, uh, one of the things that could happen is, uh, um, you know, um, um, uh, uh, for a pretty long time, uh, we are not uh, um, connected to our farms. Uh, um, uh, and in the last uh, three, four years, thanks to Geo, uh, the number of smartphones that we have in the country has gone dramatically up uh, and people all have smartphones. So we have, if I'm right, we have about 300 million people in smartphone and by 2025, we have about half a million and by 2030, it's believed to be 1 billion people in smartphones in India. So which means uh, on a piece of app, a farmer is going to know what is going to be there, uh, the weather condition. So people, let me tell you, companies like uh, Microsoft, um, uh, IBM are working on sensors. Uh, so they, they put a sensor in the land uh, and based on which they tell you what is the moisture level of this thing, what is the kind of crop inputs. So uh, I, I can give you now, there are companies, uh, uh, let me tell you, it's called the platform of platforms. Now, what happens in a digitalization process is that a farmer for like you, for example, let's say you have a farm, I'm not a farmer like you, the farm, uh, if you have a farm, uh, let's say, and you are linked to these kind of uh, apps which are really uh, becoming big in India, is about you will know exactly the soil conditions and what is the recommendation of the crop to be done. Soil conditions, weather, weather, and therefore when you should protect, what you should do, what pesticide to use, what, and these are all linked to YouTube's uh, uh, videos uh, in terms of how do you manage this one. Number one, number two is about pesticides, uh, or how do you manage this one. Then it talks about uh, uh, post uh, uh, harvest uh, facilities, that is how do you link to a cold storage, how do you link, who is to be contacted, what is this logistics, that's the third part. Fourth part is also is, is evolving is about financial tools. So uh, uh, these uh, digitalization will give you insurance to the, the farmers. It will give you um, uh, what do you call as the farm credit from the banks uh, rather than taking from some uh, uh, small guy or, 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 or a financier in a village. Uh, the farm can give you based on your credit rating. Things are going to dramatically change. Now, you have, we have all heard about Infosys, we have heard about Bipro, uh, all these companies, big companies in this world. But uh, my, uh, this is, uh, I'm a strong believer, personally, that uh, digitalization farm 
is going to be the next big companies in India in the IT sector. So uh, uh, you, you, uh, I just want to sum up to say that please look at all options of uh, 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 before you take a call um, uh, and see and, and and be digitalized in in our approach of farming. Uh, that will really help us to be very successful. Uh, um, I have seen models. Uh, that, for example, there's a company called uh, Dehat. Uh, in Delhi, I know a few of you might know. Uh, it is a platform of platforms, so it will also take you to ultimately to the uh, customers, uh, which is could be a Reliance Smart or it could be a Britannia, it could be an ITC, it could be a Cargill. So it connects you to at the end of the day. So it takes you. To the, therefore, there are no middlemen. Uh, uh, so uh, please look at the whole. When you do uh, into really into agriculture, uh, look at technology, uh, uh, and because it also protects your uh, uh, your farming methodologies, it teaches you the, the pesticides to be used, the amount of pesticides used. And at, at the end of the day, if you're going to get linked, is also about traceability, uh, and which means today's world is going to talk about food safety and traceability of which farm produces what. Uh, uh, you call it blockchain one way, uh, but I'm just saying uh, there will be time when you know I can scan and say, oh, this is a rice that is from Chidambaram. Uh, grown in Chidambaram, this field, and it gives me a tremendous feeling of happiness that I am uh, taking what I want. So that's what the world is leading to. Uh, I'm sure, therefore, uh, um, um, as you have farmland, if you're working together, look at end to end and see. It's not that everything you need to do in day one, but see that through because then you become the farmer of the future, uh, which can really create some value for yourself. Thanks a lot, Simon.